John Wall over Russell Westbrook. I also believe in giving people space. Let them come to you, Perk, right? Isn't that one of those 48 laws of power? Perk, great to have you with us. But, Max, I'm starting with you here. I might have read it. Uh, should Harden want to stay with the Rockets to play with Wall? No, he's got to get out of there, period, and fast. The bottom line is this. For all the criticism Dan Tony took and Daryl Morey, really by extension, for running the kind of offense they did, it was only because of that, only because of that, that as great as James Harden is, he was even able to get as close to a championship as he got. In any other system, given the talent on that team, which was not extraordinary, they never would have been playing a Game 7 at home against the KD, Steph, Clay, Dre Warriors. The same team that steamrolled LeBron and Kyrie and Kevin Love. Steamrolled them. Had to, were lucky to escape Houston with a Game 7 win, a game in which Chris Paul didn't even play, and the team went 0 for 27 at one stretch from 3. And yet, still, Golden State only won by single digits. Harden will never get that close again. Even if they had the same team with a different coach, it was only because D'Antoni was willing to play a kind of basketball that would be criticized, that was not aesthetically pleasing, but that was super efficient, that they were able to have so much less talent than Golden State and yet get close. Harden's a great player. He's in his prime. His prime won't last for that much longer. He's become an underrated defender. And he's gotten better and better in the clutch in the playoffs, although I still wouldn't call him clutch. But he, he's not, I didn't see him choke in this last playoffs as I'd seen him choke in the past. If he wants to win a championship, a championship, he ain't going to get it done with this roster in John Wall. That's never going to happen. It will never happen. He has to get to a team and join a team with a legitimate chance to win a championship while he's still a great player. Clearly, that is not Houston. Well, well, first of all, Max, uh, nothing is guaranteed. So to say that he needs to go to a contender team like the Brooklyn Nets, there's no guarantee that they will win the championship. And here's why I disagree with you on should Harden want to play with Wall. Yes, he should want to play with John Wall because for the simple fact that James Harden has had control over this organization more than any other player in the NBA, including LeBron James, that so, pe so many people say that runs the team and is that the hidden GM behind the scenes. James Harden have control. So a lot of these moves that have been made in the past and now, it went through James Harden. It was some, some of these moves were his call. So with that being said, James Harden, Besides Hakeem Olajuwon, two uh, championships with Clutch City, James Harden imprint on the Rockets organization, on and off the court, sits up there, right up there with Hakeem Olajuwon. And with that being said, he has built this foundation. He made this, this, this Houston team, Houston organization relevant again. And when you build something like that and you have the keys to the car, well, you have the direct number that to call your owner to get things done. Your owner lets you do whatever you want to do. I think you should at least give it a shot. Should he finish the season off? It depends on how it's going. But to start the season, you got to at least give John Wall a chance. And here's another reason why. Stephen A., you, agree, you probably will agree to this. Matter of fact, I know you will. For the simple fact that we have been lobbying on here for African-American coaches to get a chance to be a head coach in the NBA. And now we have one in Steven Silas, a first time head coach. And now he has the chance if John Wall comes back healthy, like I've been here and he looks great. If John Wall comes back healthy, Steven Silas have a chance to to coach James Harden, a guy that could finish in the MVP candidate conversation every single year, a guy in John Wall who could possibly be an all-star, who's a who's a, a, a four-star player when he's at his best, and you have a chance and you give him a fair chance to coach you guys. Like you said, Stephen A., it's not a lot of African Americans that have taken jobs that have had a fair shot to coach players like James Harden and John Wall. And that's why I think James should give John Wall a chance. Well, let me tell you something. Um, 
you talk about giving a brother a, a moment to for, a, a cause for pause. Uh, it would be that last point that you just made about Stephen Silas, because you are absolutely right on the money in terms of my feeling about that. Uh, African-American coaches, uh, uh, African-American executives uh, literally having final say and having power to lead. We don't even have one in America that has that power in, 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 uh, um, in the National Basketball Association. That's Masai Ujiri in Toronto, Canada, and he's African, he ain't even African-American. And, you know, you got this. Don't even get me started with all of that. So, KP, you are right on the money in terms of your point about that. But I still respectfully disagree with your overall point about James Harden needing to stay. And here's why. When you talk about James Harden, you know, having more control than even LeBron James, per se, or whatever, there's a legitimate argument to that. He didn't want Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard's gone. Didn't want CP3. CP3 is gone. And obviously him and Russell Westbrook, is more, even though they're brothers and they're tight, they didn't, didn't want to play together. And so that is on James Harden. It's not on James Harden that Daryl Morey walked out the door. Uh, that would be Tillman Fertitta. Obviously, when you look at uh, Daryl Morey, and I'm not saying that Tillman Fertitta did anything or Daryl Morey did anything, but clearly Daryl Morey wanted to move on, and it was Tillman Fertitta's job, if he so wanted to, to uh, uh, to coax uh, Daryl Morey in the stand. Now, somebody would easily say this. You know what? Daryl Morey was there for about 13 years. They never got to the finals. Now, you could talk about CP3 going down in game five and ultimately not being available for game six and seven of that Western Conference Finals a couple of years ago or whatever the case may be. But the bottom line is he had 13 years and he never made it to the NBA Finals. So, yes, he's won games. He's won a lot of games. He made more moves than anybody. But there's no championship, not even a conference championship to show for it. So we got to respect Daryl Morey, but at the same time point out that fact. And if I'm James Harden, Here's my attitude. I'm 32 years old, going on 33. Um, I'm a, the leading scorer in the league. I just finished averaging 34. I've averaged over 30 the last three seasons. I've been as prolific as you can get on the offensive side of the ball. I've improved defensively. I've given max effort. I haven't been injured. I didn't engage in load management. And damn, I still can't get over the hump. And now my best chance has come and gone in Houston. Because even though they got Christian Woods and even though they got DeMarcus Cousins and even though they got John Wall, who should love playing with DeMarcus Cousins, former teammates at Kentucky, and they are brothers. They're tight with one another. Here's the bottom line. When you look at what the Lakers did in the Western Conference, KP, my attitude is this. They're the standard. You've got the Clippers and Denver that you can't ignore. And my mentality is the only shot to win a championship that anybody in the NBA has to win the championship is for James Harden to end up in Brooklyn. Now, I know that, you know, ultimately he wants to be back in Houston. He'd like to retire there. No state income taxes. You get to keep most of your money, all of that other stuff. He loves it in H-Town. We get all.